I started my veterinary career in early 2000, serving the poor communities of Delhi who used tongas or the horse-drawn carriages for work purpose. Most of the people who use these animals warned me, Dr. Saab, you better be careful because these animals are shaitans, meaning devil, and they might kick or bite you. So I believed that these animals could be devil and I should be careful. And my actions were little forceful on them, you know, when it comes to examining them and treating them. Things continued for a while until a new mentor told me, Dr. Manilal, don't you think the, the term shaitan or devil better used for explaining the behavior of humans than animals? It better suits humans than animals? And she also said, when these animals are hitched to a cart and they are fitted with a, a spike, a painful spike bit in their mouth, and when they can't even move their head to drive away the fly, flies who bother them, and when you approach them with a thick needle and poke them on their butt, which will be obviously painful, what do you expect? Obviously, they will react, they will bite you, they will kick you. So that was my first learning with a powerful word, devil. So with that understanding, I thought probably these animals hate humans, horses hate humans. But slowly I learned that they are aggressive because they are acting in self-defense. I also learned that these animals are sentient beings and they are just like us, they have thoughts and feelings. Then I wondered why we call them a it? as an object, as if they are chair and table, why shouldn't we call them he or a she? A female horse should be called she and a male horse as talent should be called he, right? And I also thought, why we call these people using these animals owners? I mean, can we ever own a living being in our life? We can't, right? So why should somebody own an animal? So rather we should be calling them caretakers. Right? So, with this understanding about how we should be treating animals, so that was my first career progress. Now, after that, I moved on and I also understood that there are a lot of animals like monkeys and rats and mice used in laboratories for experimental purpose. Do you know these animals used in laboratories, they don't have a name, they all have a number. You know why? Because name means you have to care and you have to show compassion. Will you ever call your dog number 6227? You will call by the name, right? So numbering means making it impersonal and making it, you know, an easy for, way for abusing animals. So. With this understanding on the importance of the power of the word name, I went back to the same horse drawn carriage users, the caretakers of those horses, and I asked them, tell me, what is the name of your horse? That was totally an unexpected question for them. They never heard somebody asking them, Ki gode ka naam kya hai? You know, they, they were like all amused, they immediately reacted and they reacted also in a funny way saying, oh, my horse name is Shahrukh Khan. The other person said, my na horse name is Basandi. And the other person said, this is Dharmendra, meet him. And the other guy said, oh, this is uh, Sunny Diol. So they took it lightly, but I took it seriously. I went on with convincing them. And it was very important that one, they understand the, the power of that word name, because people who, whom we care, they all have a name, right? We address them by name. We don't we call people Abe, Oi, right? They have a name. So, with that understanding, I learned further in my professional career. Rather, I would say, from a crude veterinarian who hardly cared about the feelings and the fear of these animals, I went on learning and I understood that these animals have needs and I should address them. So, I was the one promoting animal welfare needs in animals to fellow veterinarians. 
I went on even now I I I I encourage the owners of uh, the the tongas the the horse caretakers in Delhi. I suggest them why don't we why don't you go for a rickshaw instead of a, a, a it's obviously profit making and i obviously reduce the suffering of the animals then i have further progress in life i became a vegan a vegan is somebody who do not use anything which is stolen from animals which means i don't eat uh, egg i don't drink milk i don't use leather i don't use any products tested on animals and that's how i got associated with an animal rights organization and further progress in my life with advocacy work law enforcement and other other legislative work so from there uh, uh when i moved on uh, with my career with my advocacy work and law enforcement i also understood that speciesism is one of the important thing that everybody should know now speciesism is something but we treat other animals as inferiors now if we look at the, the as on today look at the scenario people are looking for those phrases which are racist sexist and any i mean which are phrases which are discriminatory in nature and we want to get rid of them from our language right so that is that is what we are doing similarly we will find that there are over the period of time when we learn from childhood to adulthood we learn so many phrases in life where the animals are being addressed as disrespectful and as if they are uh, it it propagates violence on them so from that perspective it's also important to understand that speciesism is something where the uh, it is an oppressive uh, belief system in which the people who got power like humans they got power they define the boundaries and try to justify using and abusing animals something to uh, add on to the speciesism is that there is a high prevalence of you know using a uh, species remark in our society you will find that maybe one person calling the other person a dog or a donkey you know when somebody call that actually it is demeaning right it's demeaning and it's insulting and at the same time we should also understand that when we call somebody a dog or a donkey it also means that that person uh, that that animal is also being poorly reflected as somebody who can be abused and who can be cruelly treated if you look at few in the idioms uh for example uh mujhe bali ka bakra bana diya meaning that i mean a true english meaning would be that i was treated like a sacrificial goat and something like uh kutte ki tum kabhi seedhi nahi hoti right in english a dog's tail is crooked forever and something like jiski laati uski bhans so something meaning that whoever owns a stick owns the buffalo so if you look at all these idioms they they all reflect one thing that they probably reflect on animals they they uh, they are you know they 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 put an image that these animals have to be disrespected and any violation of their rights is okay so that's how when peter and other animal rights organization came into picture and they started promoting anti uh, and i mean they started removing anti animal messages from our languages so if you think of the same three idioms that i just said instead of saying that mujhe gali mujhe bali ka bakra bana diya why don't we say mujhe gali ka kachra bana diya you know meaning uh, uh, you made me a garbage in the street and similarly if you say kutte ki dum kabhi seedhi nahi hoti let's say uh, the sun never rises in the west right suraj kabhi pashchim mein nahi ugta you know harm in it right similarly if you if you want to get it off like jiski laati uski bans let's say that uh, 
Any ideas? Let's say, jiski uh, chavi uski gaadi. So, uh, there are so many ways we can actually help animals. Now, uh, something uh, also which I want to share with you is, uh, there are uh, uh, situations where we are conditioned, from childhood we are conditioned to see few animals as, uh, you know, worth caring. They, I mean, we need to show compassion to them like dogs. And there are few animals uh, like pigs whom we treat as not important, unworthy. So, but the scientists have now proved that uh, a pig is as social as a dog. And, uh, and, and sometimes they are even smarter than a dog. Now, but what, what makes the difference here? Why we treat one animal a friend and the other animal dinner? So animal rights organizations like PETA, they are very careful when they use the languages, especially the proverbs, nouns, and also the adjectives, whenever they use, we make sure that it's not dis disrespectful to animals and it doesn't normalize violence. One good example would be that we encourage people, all the dogs and cats in the surroundings, in the, you know, around the households, community animals, you know, instead of calling them strays, let's call them community animals. You know why there are people who care for them, who feed them, take care of them when they are ill. So, and also the, the, the term community, it alludes the, the constitutional uh, obligation of each and every citizen to treat animals with compassion. Mahatma Gandhiji said, to my mind, the life of a lamb is no less precious, uh, precious than that of a human being. I hold that the more helpless a creature, the more entitled it is to protection by man from the cruelty of man. So, Gandhiji was an anti-speciesist. If you look at uh, the way we have been taught in schools, it always said that animals gave us something, right? Do you think animals give us something or we take it, we steal it, right? So that is what the nursery textbook says. It says, Gai ame dood deti hai. It means cow give us milk. And the nursery textbook also says, Murgi ame ande dete hai. Deti hai. And similarly, the bear ame un dete hai. That sheep give us wool. Do they really give us something? Absolutely not. They never give us something. We steal it from them. They, they are not voluntarily giving it away. Nothing. They are, they are not giving it give anything. And if we do it, even if we, we might even kill them to get it, right? That is what we do. So that takes me uh, to one another important word, no. And I'm sure all of you might have seen the movie Pink and uh, Amitabh Bachchan's famous dialogue. And no means no. Right? He further explained, no, it's not a verb, and it's, it's a sentence in itself. So, when you use animals, when you violate them, impregnate them for milk production, they do resist. They are saying no. Are we hearing that? When we castrate a bull without anesthetic before being put to work, they are going through tremendous pain and suffering. They don't want to do it. They are resisting. The beaks of these chicks are cut to prevent aggression because in an intensity confinement it is happens. And the tails of these dogs are chopped for cosmetic purpose as a breed specification. And these rats and mice are forced to swim for their lives in experiments. And these sheep have to go through lacerated wounds when they are shorn for wool. And obviously many are killed for meat and leather. Don't you think they are saying no? They all are saying no. But the only thing is most of their expressions are non-verbal cues like they do show the fear or signs of fear. They try to run away. They try to fight back. They try to kick you, bite you. They will do everything as non-verbal cues. And as a verbal cue they also scream in pain. But the problem is human beings, we, we don't hear them because they are not truly saying know the language which we know. But if 
an animal or a human being if this means no right whether i am saying it or whether i am indicating it's a no so something uh, which i also want to say that the scientists now have proved that animals are sentient just like us and also the people who have been working with them in sanctuaries for years now they say that they feel frustrated they feel loneliness they have emotions they have motherly affection they are just like us the founder of uh, teta ingrid newke said when it comes to pain love joy loneliness and fear a rat is a pig is a dog is a boy each one values his or her life and fights the knife so let's accept we are all, all are animals i mean no doubt about it and what is important is all the sloppy languages you we, we use we should be very careful it shouldn't go against these you know sensitive smart other species other we should use powerful word words to protect them so let's not call animals pets let's call them companion animals right and let's call the not call ourselves an owner if we have a dog let's say we are the guardians right let's not call an animal it because they are not objects or it's not say that a person is being treated like a lab rat or a guinea pig because it's demeaning it's it's it gives a a false impression that animals are supposed to be treated like that then the then uh, the the conclusion is that the words have the power they can change lives they change the lives of humans as well as non humans so let be sensitive and very deliberate while using them thank you